Well, uh, Dan, let's talk about your story. So you were born and raised in Coldwater, Michigan. Well, nope, not born and raised. I basically I lived there basically since 1992. I bought a home down ah. there. I'm from the state of Michigan, but uh, Montrose, Michigan is where I ended up going to high school, things of that nature. Grew up on a 120-acre farm, so living a, growing up and, and living a life kind of like Tom Sawyer. 120-acre farm, yeah, hunting whenever you wanted to, fishing whenever you wanted to, so, you know, and, and lots of work, lots of work always to do. You named the animal, we raised it, and uh, you didn't give it any kind of pet names because sooner or later it was going to end up on your plate. Yes. So it was easier to go to wrestling practice than it was to stay home and work. <laughs> well, I, again, but, but I always say that uh, that being being raised on a farm, though, already started to structure me because you had to get up early in the morning and you had to get your chores done before you got taken care of. And, and you had to you do it. And, and, you to, eat first. and you had to do it all and still make it to, you still got to walk up and catch the bus and stuff like that. So it's a, mm -hmm. you know, a different time era whatsoever. Okay. And you started wrestling in seventh grade. Yes. Yeah. Right through the, okay. the school systems. I mean, it's, it's kind of sad what they offer up through our school systems now or what they try to pawn off as a physical education class. You know, prior to going on air, I, I, I actually have a, uh, we were talking a little bit about some things. I have a degree from Arizona State University and I used to do quite a bit of substitute teaching. So I, I've gone in for a number of physical education classes and, and, and taught that and what they try to pawn off as physical education, uh, they, it's, it's called physical activity. So when I mean physical, barely walking, I mean, it's the break of sweat. Ah, it's it's ridiculous. Again, it's kind of more and more the fall of uh, what, uh, what what we allow to happen here inside the United States. Okay, and you were quite a star in high school. You were all American as a wrestler, as well as your four brothers as well, right? Yeah, out of all five, uh, the, I have a total of. My parents had eight children. I'm number two on the the totem pole. I have one older brother. And he basically started uh, the, the wrestling thing in the family there. And uh, all five males end up going to college on full athletic scholarships for a sport of wrestling. And even my three sisters, they went to college on basically full academic scholarships. So I always try to tell you about people, I'm a jock with a brain. And trust me, I have dealt with lots of dumb jocks but I'd rather deal with an athlete with hey, a brain hey. any day. <laughs> hey. Present company, Don was, I, I, we'll go into storytelling, or Don won't get to the right question right there because he, he, may, want me, he may want me thrown off the set by that. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> okay, so you go to Arizona State University. Yeah. You're a two-time All-American over there. Uh, and then, then you graduate, and there's sort of an interesting story about uh, how, in order to get the attention of wrestling wrestling scouts, you had 17 amateur matches in one day. Yeah, again, that was in high school. Not this had nothing to do with with college. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, this I mean, still I mean, in okay, high school. I'll give you I'll give you the highlights. In high school, yes, I was a three time All American, two time high school state champion. Uh, I was the national freestyle champion, national Greco-Roman champion. I was the most pins award at the national tournament. And um, in the course of my four years of high school wrestling, I set and held eight national records simultaneously, which was a national record because no other athlete had ever held that many records at one point in time. But I was, I was a pinning machine, so I had records like most pins in one season, two seasons, three seasons, four seasons, most consecutive pins, and... And, and, and on and on. And I just, uh, I achieved a lot of success at a younger age. And then I, st I just was able to stick around at an older age. So I always tell people that I started, you know, in uh, amateur wrestling seventh grade. By my ninth grade year, high school, I'll say that's when, that's when things kind of really kind of took off for me because I turned in a paper. My wrestling coach, the head coach, Tom Castillo, he was also the government teacher. So I happened to be turning in a paper one day, and on his desk he had a stack of these amateur wrestling news magazines. I had never seen it before. I'm like, hey, coach, do you care if I look through a couple of these magazines? And he said, sure, just make sure I get it back. So as I started to read through them, it, it, it expanded my 
my my mind at that point time because at that point I was like every other wrestler. I simply did whatever the coach told me to do. And now I'm reading this and realizing all these additional techniques, tactics, they're talking about the psychological aspects of, of athletics. It's talking about new kinds of uh, cool techniques, but it also talks about weightlifting, um, stretching, you, you name it. It, it. it actually blew my mind, but it also talked about setting the goals and things of that nature. So I'll say that that kind of that was my turning point where I started to set my the first of my goals, and then with each year I kept improving as I met my goals. I just went on to the next one, to the next one. But then to get back to your original question, seventeen matches in one day. Well, by my I think it was my by my junior year, I happened to go into a tournament, and what I hated about going to these tournaments, I'm paying my entry fee to compete, and as I'm I'm there to compete. At the heavier weights, there's usually not as many people. Down around that, the 130s, 140s, 150-pound weight classes, there's a lot more people because they're, they're just, the abundance, the population was there. But once you get to the heavier weights, it's, it's pretty thin pickings. And I kept thinking to myself, well, maybe I'll go a couple weight classes. But then I, I started looking at it more and more. I'm like, and I was looking at a way to draw more attention to myself, to do something very unique that... Uh, you know, might get the college coaches talking a little bit more. So basically at that time, I ended up going three weight classes at my, what was, junior is 18 years and younger. So I, I entered three weight class, junior age division, 198, 220 heavyweight. And then I'm like, well, why don't I simply jump into open? And so I asked the, the, you know, the, like the referees and the white people, can I enter that? And they're like, well, yeah, you could. So I entered the open division, which was seniors, anything above 18 years of age. So now I'm going up against college guys, guys that are out of college, even coaches, going at 198, 220 heavyweight. So basically, in uh, in one day, I end up going two age groups, total six weight classes, 17 matches later. And and the, the, the unique thing that you got to understand is I could be, most high school gymnasiums only held three wrestle mats. So I could be wrestling on mat number one. They could be calling me to be on deck on mat number two. And I, I could be in the hole, which means I'll be third matchup on mat number three. And the moment that your match came up, they would announce Dan Sever must report to mat number two. And then the clock starts. You have five minutes to report. And if you don't report within five minutes, automatic disqualification. So I could be, and I was, on one of the mats, and I had to be over on yet another mat, so I had to finish this guy up quickly, I had to pin him, and then move on, so as I'm going from mat one to mat number two, I'm grabbing my towel, I'm grabbing my bag, I'm wiping it down, I'm taking a sip of water, Sorry, and I'm preparing for <laughs> preparing for the next match, so again, one day, two age groups, six weight classes, 17 matches later, and, and literally, it was uh, in the beginning, I, I, even a couple of referees that were doing the weigh-ins, they were just kind of like chuckling to themselves, but then as the day progressed on, you know, now there's people going to the pay phones. Again, most of your audience aren't going to know what a pay phone is, but they were going to the pay phones and they were making phone calls because now that I got college coaches that are, it, it worked. Because I had all the college coaches thinking, what, what's this kid machine that could do 17 matches, two different age groups, and, and go across three different weight classes like that? Because, you know, there were big differentiations between weight classes at that time. 